right, what's up? We're back. It is episode 15 of yeah. Behind the Bikini. Um, welcome, everyone. I'm going to get it out of the way so I don't forget. Like, comment, subscribe, all the fun stuff. Turn on the notification bell so you know when our podcasts go up and you can watch them and all of the all of those things. So there, I said it this time. <laughs> I always at the beginning. The very end. <laughs> no, yeah. I always forget till the end. I'm like, oh, I've got to go talk about that. So um, this today's podcast, we're going to be talking about um, handling the holidays and some tips and tricks and things like that to manage it a little bit easier, a little bit better for you and all of that kind of stuff. But um, before we get into all that, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Well, I'm good. You're back home. You were traveling quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. We just got home, not yesterday, the night before from Vegas. We were there for a week, though. And now I'm here for another week. And then next Wednesday, 3 a.m., I'm getting in the car and starting my trek over to from Florida to Arizona. <laughs> so you guys, you found a place. You bought a place, right? Or... Yes, we're renting. We're going to be renting a spot renting, for a renting, year, renting. and then we own our home here, and we're just going to be keeping it because just like this year, we're going to go back and forth a ton. <laughs> right, right. And you're so tell me again, you're doing a gym move as well, right? Yes, I am. Um, so at the end of this year, our five-year lease is up. And uh, in the current space that we're at right now, it's we just want to – we could have stayed there, I guess. Um, we could have maybe done some construction and, and grown into, you know, or changed the space around. But we we definitely wanted a little bit of a change of scenery and kind okay. of to breathe some life into it. Um, you know, when Drew and I started the gym, it was actually inside of my aunt's physical therapy clinic that is right next door. Okay. And then when we moved and opened up our own location, we went right next door to her. And I think it's just time for new, you know, something new, gotcha. something fresh it's just we've been there for at this point eight years um okay so yeah we went there is the new location is the new location like a better like a better location or is it just is it more updated of a building or what is it that that drew you to it it's really it's it's actually funny it's the very first building that we looked at before we decided to go next door to my aunt um why we decided in the beginning to go to our original location we're in now is we're one mile off of the beach. Um, and that's where pretty much all of our clientele are in, the, in that area. Um, the new location is about seven miles in. Um, so okay. obviously we know with the economy, um, you know, changes in, in, in economics and things like that, rents are astronomical and through the roof. So this just makes more of a financial sense for us. Okay. It also allowed us the ability to open up the space in a relatively <laughs> easy way, the way we wanted to construction wise. Uh-huh. I say I'm laughing now because because we went to the unit last night and we thought we were two weeks ahead. We're actually two weeks behind now that we're there. So I don't know if they were lying to us or just off on their timeline, but we were there last night. That's just construction in general. That's just construction in general. I mean, it's just anytime you try to do anything, tack on another month. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know, basically. Uh, I I know, right? I got to be in that spot by January 1st or else I got to pay rent on my other space. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's a lot. So we are, we are exhausted. You know, this is definitely wasn't the time to be doing both things, but we're workers. So we'll get, we'll make it work. We'll make it happen. No, I told you two years ago is when I um, bought my house here. And that was during the same time frame as Cutie's Car from the Stage, like literally closed on it during that weekend. I was like, Hey, I just bought a house, you guys. (laughs) And here I go and doing all these things. (laughs) No, right. I was just like, you know, it's it's one of those things. It's like I feel like when stuff happens, it's like it's rain. It, when it rains, it pours. So you just deal with it and you just move with it and you just go with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Drew woke up this morning. I woke up a couple hours before him, and I just feel terrible for that guy. He's he's got, he's got a lot going on between the, yeah. the job switch with Fit Body, and then obviously he's taking care of all the construction. I I don't know construction. I'm I'm the doer. So you just tell me to do something, I'll do it. So he woke up this morning, and the first thing I said, let's let's hug it out. Let's take a deep yeah. breath. So we hugged and took a deep breath. And I said, honey, we're, we're going to get through this. It's going to be okay. So we will one day at a time. And I tell my girls too, on the hard days, one second at a time. And that's what we're doing right now. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, it's just, it's, that's life. You yeah. know what I mean? At the end of the day, that's why I said, like, people always want to say, oh, I could never prep and do this and that because I have this going on and that going on. I'm like, you think we don't have this going on and that going on too? <laughs> it's like, it may not be the exact same thing, but it's definitely everybody has their, has their shit they got to deal with. It just is what and, it is, you know? And I, I think, I agree. I, I don't understand <clears throat> that because 
when everything is so chaotic and I don't have control over these things, I like to control the things I can, which is what I put into my mouth and how I exercise yep. to alleviate my stress. So I want to control what I can. And those are two things I can control to make yeah. me feel my best. So I, I don't really understand that either. Like, <clears> oh, <throat> crazy. So now let me eat off plan and make things even more crazy and hectic for right. myself. <laughs> uh, that's not, well, that, yeah. you know, that's one thing I don't know about you, but like one thing that it really helps me with is <clears throat> I don't have to think about my food. Like I'm going to eat the same thing every day. <laughs> you know, if I feel like I want to have something different, I do or whatever, but, but in general, everything is the same. You know, yes. so it's one less thing you have to think about, really. Think about, yes, you just go on autopilot. And then again, yeah. chaos is around you and you just have your autopilot of your meals. That's, that's the right. one thing you can eliminate stress. Of. Yep, that's right. Absolutely. And like you said, that's the only thing you can control. Like we talked about this for the shows and stuff. The one thing that I, I felt like I could control was my look. You know what I mean? Like I, I know I, I know I can control my conditioning. I can control my tan, my makeup, my posing, I can control those things. So those are the things I want to be happy about. You know what I mean? Um, I talk about this because I had a client that just competed this past weekend and we had a little pep talk prior to the show and all that kind of stuff. And she was just putting a lot of pressure on herself because she had all her friends and her family coming to the show and she wanted to do really well. She hasn't been on stage for two years and, you know, she just wanted to, she just wanted to do well. And I said, listen, I said, I get it. I understand. I said, but your friends and family are going to love you tomorrow, regardless of how you yeah. do on that stage. It doesn't matter. I said, you know, the only thing that you have control over is how you perform. I said, you don't have control over if you win the show, you know, you don't have control over if you, if you play well. I know you want to play well. I get that. I understand that, but you don't have control over that. I said, so by focusing on the things that you have control over, you're going to execute those things correctly versus the things you don't have control over. Right. And come show day, she, focused on things that she didn't have control over. And she, she said, she's like, this was the most nervous I've ever been on stage. She's like, and that's my fault. You know, like, she's like, I let the nerves get to me. I let it get to me and I didn't perform how I know I could have performed and things like that. And I feel that I've done that before. I've definitely done that before. And I'll be honest with you. I don't know about you, but like when I go to a show to compete, I would rather be in a place where nobody knows me <laughs> versus my backyard <laughs> because when yes. everybody you know is there, it's a lot more pressure. Yes. Like, I had zero pressure in Japan because I knew nobody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like, I, and also I said, I was like the live stream is on at like 2 AM back home. So even if people want to watch it, they're, probably most of them are not going to be even watching the live stream. So who cares? You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. So I literally, I was like, there is no pressure here. I'm just going to have fun. <laughs> yeah. The only two shows that I am allow family or friends to attend. I don't know why my computer does this. I need to look into this. Is um, Tampa Bro. It. Tampa Bro. Yeah. Because it's a home show. Yeah. It's local. And the Olympia. Other than that, I uh -huh. asked them to kindly watch the live stream. And why? Number one for me, yes, it, it adds a ton of pressure. It adds a ton yeah. of anxiety knowing that everyone that I, I perform better in a room of people I don't know versus people I do know. Yeah. Um, again, because of that added you know, pressure and expectation and all of your friends and family think you should win, right? And they don't right. understand why you didn't. And it's hard right. to be able to explain that. And number two is, this is a very selfish sport. When I get off stage, the first thing I want is some peace and quiet and a shower. Yeah. I don't, I, you know, and if I have 10 or 15 people there, obviously they want to stay, they want to take photos, yes. they want to talk, they want to go out to eat in, the, in between prejudging and finals. So some people don't understand. I can't do that. Right. Um, yep. so me, you know, and my dad has only now been to two shows in his lifetime. And he says, thank you. Thank you for kind of telling me where you're at, because I want to see you and hug you and right. blah, blah, blah. But I know that that's not the time and the place now. So yep. it's about communicating what your needs are and those expectations. And absolutely, you're you're going to have that added pressure knowing that your family is going to be there because, of course, you want to win and you want to do well for them. You want to take a picture with that medal. But yep. it's not it's not their job to make that decision at the end of the day. It's the judges. So that's where you got to focus on what you can. That's right. And also, like, you know, like you're saying, like your family, no matter what happens that day on show day, they still love you the next day. You know what I mean? Yes. They don't care. You know, they want to just see you have fun and enjoy yourself and all those kinds of things, you know. I've been in plenty of shows where it's not a competition and my parents are just happy to be there watching me on stage. You know what I mean? So they just want to see their kids being happy. That's what they want to see, you know, and your friends, the ones that really care about you, things like that. Again, they don't care what, what you place on stage. They just want to see that you have a good time, that you enjoy yourself, you know? Um, so the people that really matter, they don't care. Yeah. They don't care how you perform. 
I think too, Drew was talking about this with one of his athletes. Um, it's, it's, this is where social media has done us a disservice, right? Because yeah. people are so scared, you know, after a show, you're going yeah. into the show, you're posting all of your updates and you're excited yeah. and you're hoping you're going to place well. And then maybe after the show, you just miss that top five spot or you miss that top two or whatever your yep. expectation was. And the client called Drew and was very upset because they were like, well, what do I tell my, my, my people on social media? I'm like, I'm embarrassed. Yeah. And we were like, if that's, if that's what your goal is, then you're in this kind of for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, you have done a transformation. You are completely different than you were six months ago. That's right. the win is beating right. yourself. So if you have this big, you know, aura about yourself and now you feel afraid to post on social media due to your placings that, that past weekend, I really challenge you to kind of look into that internally and what yes. really is that. Yep. And, and if that's the way that you're going to approach every show, I'm sorry, you're going to be very sorely disappointed most times. Hmm. Um, you know, we've yeah. talked about this on podcasts before, you're going to lose more than you win in this sport. That's just the way it is. So it's, it's how you come back for those through, through those losses and how you take that and maybe post about what you learned from that experience yes. and how you're going to turn it into a positive. And you're going to come back next time and get that second place spot, get yeah. that first place spot. So yep. it's a hard one. And I think people, you know, like you said, people feel the pressure about that, like they want to live up to the expectation. But what they don't realize is that when you don't hit that expectation or you don't hit that goal or something like that, if you are transparent with your followers and your fans and things like that, that makes you more real. Yes. You know, I yes. get that a lot because, you know, obviously, like I have a lot of people like, oh, you're going to win a show. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, listen, I'm, I'm very um, realistic about myself. I'm realistic about where I am. I'm realistic about where I want to go. So, so I understand the placings thing. I get all of that, you know, and I'm like, no, I was like, thank you. I appreciate the vote of confidence. You know what I mean? But I'm like, I know where I am and where I have to get to. I get that. So, you know, when I get off stage and everyone's like, oh, did you first call out? Well, I'm like, no, I'm not placing. <laughs> what it is like I'm not placing you know yeah. so yeah. there's there's just there, and there's nothing wrong with that too like you got to remember you know when we're on the pro stage first of all pros are the elite of the elite of the elite to even get to the pro stage is an accomplishment let alone compete on the pro stage you know what I mean that's a big deal when you're in the NPC and you're an amateur just getting to stage is an accomplishment but like people don't realize there's 99.9% .9 of the world's population who can't even dream about getting up there at all like they can't even get up there you yeah. know so the fact that you even got up there and did that is bigger and more of an accomplishment than most people will ever be ever able to accomplish do. yes you know so you should never be upset about again something you don't have control over a placing things like that like i tell people all the time like i can't get upset about my placing if i did all the work that i can do because you know i, I say it like i'm genetically i know how i'm put together i get it and when it comes to competition, it's about fitting into a criteria box. And I know that a girl with shorter legs and longer and smaller waistline is probably going to place better than me because she fits that genetic criteria better than I do. Doesn't mean I didn't work just as hard, you know, but it is what it is. I mean, that's that's just part of the game. That's just yeah. part of the game, you know, yeah. and if you're not if you're not OK with what the rules of the game are, then don't play. Right. <laughs> you know, it's just part yeah. of the game and it's okay. Like if you, if you don't fit the rule box, that's okay. You, you do what you can to look your best. Yeah. That's and bodybuilding it. is all about that never ending journey. There's always that's something right. you could be working on. Even Jen and Maureen, our last two that's winners right. of the Olympia, they still have feedback. They still have things they have to work on and they're the yeah. standard of our division. Um, so as especially, so for the rest of us, of course we all have things to work on. And that's, that's the goal of bodybuilding is that never ending journey of keep continuing to push yourself and showing up for yourself and working on those improvements. If it wasn't that way, this would be really boring. That's right. <laughs> if, if, if you just got up and everyone was perfect and you know, no, no changes, no feedback, no nothing. A lot of us would drop out. That's right. Before. You get, you get bored. Absolutely. You know, that's something, you know, people always ask me, like, why don't I compete? Because, like, you know, I went pro naturally, all this kind of stuff. Why don't I compete in a natural federation? I was like, because it's not a challenge. Right. <laughs> like, I'm like, I would walk into those shows and I'm, I'm just being honest. I'd sweep those shows. Like, I know that Absolutely. because of my yeah. work ethic and I know what I do. I'm like, it's not a challenge. I want to put myself up against people that are difficult. Yes. I would much rather get my ass handed to me against somebody who is a top tier com competitor than bullshit. Like, what's Absolutely. the point? What's me the point? Too.
Yeah. Like, yeah. Why am I doing this? I want to have a hard competition. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. And then the more you move up and you get that feedback and you keep getting better, eventually yeah. it's going to be your time. You're going to only continue to improve. That's if right. you're not, something's off, right? That's so right. Like, obviously we know that's not it with us, but it's when you get to that point, it's so much sweeter. And that's yes. where too, I have a really hard time, you know, with nationals being this weekend. I, I do observe that the girls that go pro their first national show have a much harder time when after that, yeah. um, getting into the pro league and whatnot. You know, you have to think when you're at the top of that national level, you are kind of the best at that national yes. level. But as soon as you turn pro, you immediately go right back down to the bottom. The and you got to work your way mm -hmm. back up. And the girls yeah. that had to grind and fight their way for that pro card, you know, four plus national shows, I say, yeah. they have a lot more grace going back down to the bottom and reworking their way back up. They already know that grind. They know what it's going to take. That's their expectation. But the yeah. girls that go pro on that first one, listen, more power to them. Congratulations. Great job. I'm not taking anything away from that. I've just observed that it's a little bit harder for them to understand. Yes. Now you have to make that grind. And believe me, in the pro league, you're going to have to make that grind unless you just come out a genetic freak. And there are those as well. But there most are of those, us, yes. It's not. Yep. So I appreciate a grind. I had a grind. I appreciate the the need, the work ethic. And, you know, we, we talked about my sport story in 2020 when I didn't go pro and everybody else on that, on that stage at the Tampa Pro when I won the overall, they went pro that year and I didn't. I'm so glad it didn't happen because I wasn't ready to be a pro. Right. My posing was off. My physique definitely wasn't there. I was not in a mental headspace and I had to work for that. And it made sense yeah. when it happened. Yep. Yep. And, you know, you look at people, too, that seem like they just have this, like, meteoric rise. Like, take Ari, for example, right? Um, she came out and just, boom, hit that pro stage. It was like, holy shit, she's here. But, well, you don't, people don't realize, like, she took two years off, right? Two she years two? after. Two. Yeah, two years yeah, after she, she won the overall at 2019 off. Nationals. Yep. So she used those two years to her advantage, you know? She wasn't getting on stage over and over again, but she was working on her, her physique. Yes. You know, I just saw, I saw a reel that she put up, I think, yesterday where she went pro in two shows. Yep. And it's like, that's freaking crazy, but she must've had a realization in the back of her head. Like if I want to be competitive on the, on the pro stage, I got to do this, this, and this. Yep. So she went and did it, you know? And now she came and, seventh in the world, first Olympia. Yeah. But again, that was three years of her grinding in the back work. Yeah. In silence. You know? Yeah. Yeah. People don't realize it's like, you know, I've heard that before too. Like, I've had um, competitors who, for example, have won the overall at a national show and then they get to the pro stage and they're just not doing as well. And like, why am I not doing as well? I said, because, you, and I was like, and why are these people beating me when I, you know, I beat them at that national show and stuff like that. I was like, well, when you're at that national show, I said, you had everything on point, you know, your, your conditioning was on point, your shape, all that stuff was on point. I said, since you've been in the pro league, it's been a little off, you know, you haven't been quite there yet. I said, so yeah, they're going to beat you on that day. Yeah. You know, you got to bring your best package. If you don't bring your best package, especially in the pro league, you're going to get beat. Yeah. You know, so you have to focus on the things that you have control over versus saying, well, why did, why did I beat them at nationals? And now they're beating me. Right. It's a different stage. It's a different show. It's a different body. It's a different judging panel. You have to bring your best. You can't just like rest on the fact, oh, I won, won the overall at this show. So I'm going to win the next one. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. You know, continuously getting uncomfortable. I think the second you're comfortable in this sport, that's where things start to falter, right? And then you're less honest with yourself and uh, you're the expectations of yourself. It's like, you know, oh, well, I did that. So now X should be producing. No, not right. necessarily. It's you have right. to re reproduce that now every single time and be yep. real with yourself if you are or not. I've been yep. in that case many times where I'm like, oh, you know, throwing a temper tantrum. And then Drew goes, did you really do everything that you were supposed to do? Did you really nail your posing? Were you yeah. really it? And I'm like, hmm, no, I wasn't. Yeah. You got to be 100% every time. And of course we know that's impossible. But then you have to mm -hmm. just accept that when it's not your day to win, knowing yep. that that was the headspace or the mentality that you were in. Yep. And I'll be honest too, like once I, so going back to where, like where we are in our reverses and all that kind of stuff right now, um, since I've made that decision where I'm going to, I'm going to really focus on doing well in masters and things like that. Um, it's, it's kind of lit a new fire for me. Um, because we go back to like, I understand my limitations in the open. Like I understand my genetics. I understand my age. I understand all of those things. And it's almost like those are like 
excuses as to why I'm like, I know I'm not going to do as well as these other girls. Like I get it. <clears throat> when I get to masters, I don't have those excuses anymore. You know what I mean? Like they're not, they don't, they're, that's not a thing anymore. Right. Yes. There are still going to be people that have better genetics than me. Not going to lie. But I'm going to be on a more, a more level playing level field, field. Right. So that takes away that, that aspect of a lot of the things that I'm like, I can't, I can't overcome those things in the open, but I can overcome those things in the masters, yeah. you know? So even now, like when I'm going through my reverse and things like that, like I've been working on different posing transitions because I mentioned one of the things I felt like I could have done better um, in Hawaii and in Japan was holding my waistline in tighter. So um, I've worked on a couple of transitions and changing those so that my waistline stays, stays tighter. And again, I'm two weeks out from my last show and I'm not going to compete again until the end of the summer, probably, you know, but already, I'm, working, but already put in I'm working on those things now. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm like this, this was a problem. I'm going to fix it. Right. Um, going back to, I checked in this morning today with Jamie and you know, the issue with the tan on my glutes, I'm like, I'm going to fix this. Right. So um, I put, the tanning solution on last night, along with um, lotion and stuff like we talked about last week and, and, and things like that. And like, it helped a little bit, but it's not perfect. So I'm like, okay, so I told Jamie, I said, so I'm going to wait a couple weeks until I get all of this tan and all of the residue off me. Cause I still have a little bit of residue from Japan. So I'm going to get everything off. So maybe two, three weeks from now and do it again and try it again. Um, Cause it helped a little bit, but it's not completely gone, completely gone. So Does I was it like, feel all right, rough? Yeah. Okay. It's rougher skin. It's rougher okay. skin. So, you, you know, um, I can't remember if we talked about this last time or not, as far Maybe. as like exfoliating and stuff like that. Um, but I talked to Marilyn with Liquid Sunrays as far as how to fix that. Um, and her response was to be gentle with that area as far as exfoliating. Like for me, I tend to exfoliate that area more because, you know, I shave it and I exfoliate it and everything like that as well. Plus I sit on it all day long. So that's, it's like a constant rough area. You know, yeah. she's like, you got She's like, you got to be more gentle with that area. <clears throat> so don't exfoliate it as much, you know, try to keep it as, as um, moisturized as possible. Put as much moisturizer on there as you can. Um, she goes, and you can put moisturizer on prior to putting your tan on just like you would put it on your knees or your elbows or something like that. So it wouldn't grip as much. So that's what I did last night when I put the tan on, I put a, a hand coat um, of liquid sunrays on last night, but I put lotion on that area prior to which did help a little bit. Like it didn't grip as much um, okay. this time around, but it still did grip. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I think I needed a good, like two, three weeks of not exfoliating, not, you know, roughing that area up more. It's because they soften the skin up a little bit. Yeah. So I'm going to try and just like really extra moisturize all those kinds of things and just see if that helps and then try it again. Um, okay. You know, you know, two, three weeks, that kind of thing. But again, I'm not competing forever now, but I still want to figure these things out now. You know, this is the time to do it, right? Yeah. So, um, so that's that's the goal there. And then um, just an update on the reverse. Things are going a little bit better this year than last year, I think. Um, I did a free meal out on Thursday last week. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that because I know you posted about it and texted like me shit. about it. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like shit for two days. So I was like, okay. Feel? Just like bogged down. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Puffy. Um, like my body just didn't process the sugar and the alcohol very well. Like I didn't eat a lot. Most of my meal was, was seafood and fish and things like that. So it wasn't a lot of food, but it just added sodium. Um, not as much water. Um, you know, I had to alcohol. Cake. Yeah, I had cake, which the cake had um, cream cheese. It was a carrot cake, you know, mm -hmm. so cream cheese, so dairy, you know, and alcohol. And you mix all that stuff together and stuff that I haven't had in months. And, and you're you know doing I mean? all of it at once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And again, I only had probably three or four bites of the cake. But still, I mean, that's just stuff that my body's not used to. Yeah. And I'm lactose intolerant as it is. So you add a little bit of dairy in there, it's going to screw my whole body uh, up. You know what I mean? Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. So for like, again, for like two days, I felt like crap. Plus, you know, we went out, we went to the Dave Chappelle comedy show that they did here in DC. And then we went out after that. So I wasn't even in bed until 2 a.m. or something like that. So you take that into account too. That's not typically when I go to sleep, you know? Um, so sleep was off, my circadian rhythm's been off, all of that, even just from coming from, J from back from Japan, inflammation was, was, was real, you know, for yeah. like two days. It was like, I literally blew up 10 pounds that first, that first morning when I woke up, I was up 10 pounds because of inflammation, Wow. which I've done. That's happened to me before, you know, I, okay. I, that's happened to me before. 
And it's the same scenario when I'm, like, I'm eating crap like that, you know? The following day, I dropped about half of that. Now I'm actually, now I'm actually lower in weight than I was last week for check ins. So um, my calories this past week were over 2,000. She just bumped them up again. Which I was just going to say, now. you probably haven't heard from her yet, but you're probably. No, I did. She, she responded right away. And then she put me into, yeah, 2150. Oh, that's week. right. She's in Dallas. So she's on our time right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love, so, I love when she's in our time. So. <laughs> I know, right? I know. Um, so yeah, so she bumped me up again. Um, last week, she wanted my steps to be at 10, uh, 10,000 steps a day. Uh, I averaged at about seven. So I was down quite a bit in steps, but I still was dropping weight. So because of that, she dropped my steps too. So my steps this week are down to 8K and she dropped one of my cardio sessions out as well. Um, so, you know, just that's the other thing too, like being honest with your coach about things. I know some people like to not be honest about that. Maybe they would say, oh, well, I got, you know, 10,000 steps this day and I got 5,000 this day. Like now I averaged seven, 7.1 or whatever it was. Um, <clears throat> but what that told her is that even at that amount of activity, I'm still, I'm still maintaining and dropping weight. So that means we can pump the food up and we can, you know, bring the, bring the cardio down. Um. So again, being honest about those kinds of things, even if you don't hit your goal. Yeah, because we can only help you know exactly yeah. what's going on. And it right. wasn't, it it was, what, what am I going to say here? You didn't hit your plan, but because right. you were honest about that, then she can say, oh, well, that's actually okay. And mm -hmm. like, you know, some people would think I can tell her this because she's just going to increase my steps or give me more cardio or yes. no, on the contrary, it's that you kind of just manipulated your own plan to not to your own fault last week and it's working. So now let's yeah. continue that same plan. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Um, you know, and I've been kicking my ass in the gym. I mean, that's one of the best things about post-show. I feel like all those added calories and stuff. I'm like, Oh, feels so good. <laughs> the gym feels so good right now. I'm yes. like, I get pumps like crazy. I'm like, Oh, I freaking love it. You know what I mean? It's like, if you get your strength back, all of my weights have gone up as far yeah. as lifting and all of those kinds of things. It's so much fun. Like I, I, we were talking about this last week about the reversing thing. I will never understand people that don't train the week after their show because that is just the best time to train. It really I know is. I love training the week after the show. You go from Ugh. hating the gym and hating the way everything feels to rawr. And you feel yeah. Like I'm like, oh, I can't wait. Yes. <laughs> like, I can't wait to get back to the gym right now. Like, I want to yes. go now. You know, and we're all eating like an asshole the week after the show. So it just moves some food around and it yes. just makes you feel better. Morale is better. The yes. pumps, it just gets you in such a good mental space. And that doesn't even mean that you have to go right into like an intensive, aggressive plan. Just go into the gym that week and have fun. Have fun. Do whatever yep. you want to do. Go play on some machines. Do whatever rep, rep ranges you want. I totally yep. agree with that. Take the week after the show, you do whatever you want in the gym, but get your butt in the gym and just try That's to have right. fun and move again. Make That's the right. gym fun. Then the second week, then you get back to your program, your progressive overload, that intensity, you know, refocus. But I don't yeah. know. I think that does create a good morale for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and I think it does help. Again, you said like the food, moving the food around and stuff like that too. Like, um, you know, I've allowed myself to eat whatever I feel like eating this past week, but that fits within my macros. So, right. you know, that's one of the things that people don't, one of the unsung things about macros, I think, especially reverse dieting, because you don't have to be super strict. Like I can have my little chocolates. I can have, like, I made this, this pumpkin whipped pie thing and like, it's still healthy, but it's sweet. And it's got the things that I want. You know, I can have ice cream. I had, I finally had my ice cream cake from my birthday, but again, it fit into my macros. Like, and I, and again, I timed it. So it was after my workout. Like I tend to do those, those sweets and things like that right after my training. So then it goes directly to the muscle, but all that kind of stuff. But it allows you to crave those things or have those things that you crave when you're going through that reverse and not feel like you're off plan. Because I wasn't off plan. I still fit all of that into my into my macros. It still fit what I was doing for that day. But I got to have the treats. Now, yeah. I'm not saying I'm going to continue to do that forever. But it, it helps in those few weeks after your show when you're just trying to rein everything back in. Yeah. Because um, like we talked about before, like my hunger levels are through the roof and I'm hungry all the time. So, you know, allowing myself to have things like that prevents me from binging later, you know? So like that's that it keeps me stable. And again, I'll, I've already just in the last couple of days started to clean that up a little bit. 
And as I go, I will clean it up even more. And again, I'm still going to keep that free meal that's in my in my plan right now, but I'm not going to do what I did this last week because I know how, how badly my body re like responded from that, you know? Yeah. So, you know, you, just little by little by little by little. And then eventually I'll be back to my normal, this is what I do all the time kind of thing, you know? Yeah. It's, I had a client that checked in this week. This goes to our topic today. And she went to Disney last week with her family. And she said in her check-in that she didn't eat off plan in Disney, but she really wanted to. And it was extremely hard for her. And what I told her is, I appreciate you not eating off plan. However, this restrictive mindset is going to lead to a binge eventually. Right. So where you need to find is the middle ground, is allowing yourself to enjoy something from Disney, but yep. then not getting to the other extreme of allowing yourself something and creating that binge. It's a very fine line. And I know yes. that's very gray, but it's, it's the mental aspect. It's you yes. choosing to allow yourself, if you want to go to Disney and you want to have one of those Disney ice cream sandwiches and the Mickey pretzel, then you just commit to those two snacks. Yep. Now you're allowing yourself some flexibility, but you're also not binging. That's yep. in the middle. And it takes maybe some preparation or some, you know, conversations with yourself before you enter the, into the park, yep. um, you know, or bringing your two meals into the park at Disney and allowing yourself to untracked meals. One of them a little bit cleaner, one of them a little bit more fun, whatever that looks like. But I do agree that there needs to be some middle ground. It can't be too restrictive. You guys mm -hmm. saw, you know, right when I told you I was going into Thanksgiving, I was being really, really hard on myself. And that's when I kind of broke Thanksgiving day because I didn't want to get out of that. And yep. Jamie was like, listen, Jordan, you need to have some flexibility. What's the middle ground here? That's right. And that is where I think that, you know, it's so hard at the end of the year when the holidays are boom, boom, right back to each other. And everybody's got parties and families and things like that is really trying to make those conversations with yourself. You can't enjoy and binge on every single outing That's for right. Christmas between now right. and Christmas. But which ones are most important for you to have that flexibility and taking that your hands off the wheel and the rest of them just be a little bit more mindful and intuitive. Yes. So what are some, so what are your, some of your thoughts, like as far as how can you prepare yourself to go to those outings and things like that? What do you do? So a couple of them, uh, to, 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 to be honest, I'm very manageable now. I, I do have divorced parents. So when I first started uh, competing, it was very hard because I had my divorced parents. Then you have the, you know, the other people that are having parties and you have your friends that are having parties. Yep. So, I have to go back to when that was happening. A couple of those parties, I, again, I would choose which ones I wanted that <clears throat> flexibility. So maybe my friends were having a game night and I knew that they were ordering in from my favorite restaurant. Well, that's something that I really want to be able to yeah. have. And then Christmas yeah. Day, I want to be able to enjoy Christmas Day, wake up, drink whatever coffee I want, make a big breakfast, whatever. So the rest of it in between, I have to choose. Most of the times I'm bringing my own meals, just like mm -hmm. normal. Or most of the times I'm asking these people what they're serving. I'm that girl. I'm annoying. And they'll yeah. tell me, hey, we have a chicken marsala with, you know, a, a side green and mashed potatoes. Okay, well, then I know that I'm going to enjoy the chicken marsala. But instead of the mashed potatoes, I'm going to bring my rice because mm -hmm. I can track that. And I know yep. exactly what's going into that versus the mashed potatoes that might have the butter, the cream cheese and the things that I don't have control over. So then I'm just picking certain options that are better. Um, drinking. Drinking is a huge one and something that people really don't think about. There's a lot of empty calories that are in alcohol with the mixers and things like that. But not only that, the alcohol can start the inflammatory process. Yep. And that makes you feel bloated and swollen. Yep. Blah, blah, blah. Like, so then I have to really decide where I want to drink and what I want to drink um, and keeping that honestly to a minimum. If you could keep your alcohol level down or diminish that, a lot of the times that clears up a lot of these extra calories and extra bloat and extra weight that you're seeing on the scale and starting to freak out about. Mm -hmm. Where people go wrong is they choose the alcohol thinking that it's going to be less calories, you know, less filling. And, but that, that, that could actually be the, the problem. Yep. And you have to think too, when you're drinking, you're clarity goes down. So yep. where you had that conversation with yourself and that agreement with yourself, the more the alcohol starts to rise, the ah, screw it. <laughs> screw it. <laughs> yep. And you start to lose sight of the extra bites you're now eating. You know, yes. oh, I'm just gonna have a little bit of that. And then before you yep. know it, unfortunately, you're 500, 800 calories over what you want it to be, right? Yep. So it's just having that conversation <clears throat> at the, the success is in the pre-preparation. How about yeah. you? 
I agree with all of those things. And that's what I was going to mention about the alcohol thing. I think the alcohol is a, is a slippery slope. Um, yeah. I am a big proponent. I love, you know, a good glass of wine or champagne or Me a too. cocktail. 100%. I'm all about it. But you have to have that limit of I'm going to have one or I'm going to have two. You know, again, I allot for that in my macros. I put it into my, I log it into my MyFitnessPal if I have it. Yes. Um, because it's, it makes it real as far as how much you're intaking with that alcohol, um, whether it's the sugar or whatever. Um, and by the way, there's apps out there that help you figure out this kind of stuff too, because alcohol is not a typical macro. So you have to log it as either carbs or fats. So yes. Just so you know. Um, and there are, there are apps that will help you with that. Uh, I might know from experience. <laughs> I have a graphic. <laughs> I have a graphic on like how to track yeah. alcohol. Yeah. There's an actual like wine app where you can plug in what the, you know, what the alcohol content is and they'll tell you exactly how many calories the glass of wine is and all those kinds of things. And so, I'll just say this, typically a glass of wine is about 30 grams of carbs. And 39 like, actually. There you go. 39. <laughs> Again, that's a might lot know, of it. Might know from experience. <laughs> yeah. Listen, you and I are wine, red wine drinkers, right? So we're not uh -huh. calling anybody out here. We love our wine, but uh -huh. we, ha Absolutely. we have to keep that in mind. You know, you have to be yep. realistic with yourself. <laughs> yep. And, you know, again, going back to what you said, I think that the, the toughest part of the alcohol is that it lowers your inhibitions. It lowers your reasoning. It lowers, it lowers your cognitive, like cognitive dissonance and all that stuff. So you're like, oh, I'll just have another another piece of bread or whatever. It's not a big deal. You know, let me throw some more butter on there. Not a big deal. You know, whatever it is. And those things add up. So yeah. what I do personally, um, it depends on what stage of prep I'm in and stuff like that. So if I'm going into a holiday party and I don't have, you know, like that free meal and things like that, then I plot everything inside my fitness pal before I go. And I oh, say, yeah. listen, this is, this is what I'm going to allow myself in alcohol. This is what I'm yep. going to allow myself in food. Um, I make sure that I eat before I go a, a dense protein meal before I go, because that will set me up. So I'm not hungry when I get there. Yeah. That's one of the biggest problems. I think when you're hungry at parties is that you're just like, okay, let me just start snacking on stuff, yeah. you know? Yeah. So if I'm in, um, you know, like I said, a scenario where I need to stay tight on my macros, that's how I'll do it. As far as going to these parties, if it's a free meal situation, then again, I will have, you know, my, my normal meals during the day and then go and have my free meal and not think about it kind of thing. But again, to the extent of I'm not going to have 10 cocktails, <laughs> you know, I'm going to have two, you know, yeah. something like that. You know what I mean? And I do typically keep it to one fun thing, meaning like, for example, when I went to dinner, this is where I screwed up. Uh, so my meal was all seafood and fish, right? Good, good for you stuff, right? So it's not a big deal if you, I feel like it's not a big deal if you overeat a little bit on protein, you know what I mean? Um, so good, good. No problem there. Where I screwed up was I chose alcohol and dessert, right? That's why I got inflamed. Yeah. If I chose one or the other, I would have been fine. Yeah. You know, so I feel like that's the direction to go when you're going into holiday parties. Choose one. Like if you want to drink, then drink, but don't eat the cake and the, and the cookies and the candies and all that stuff. Leave that stuff to the side. If you want to have the desserts, have the desserts and don't drink. Yeah. You know, so pick the one thing that's fun. You know, yeah. pick the one thing that you really want. Maybe it's maybe you're craving fats. You know, maybe you just really want something fatty. So have that, you know, that steak or whatever it is that they're doing at the at the um, dinner that's high in fat. If that's your thing, go for it. Or like uh, salad dressings. We were talking, I had this on my stories. Like everybody wants this dressing with salad when they get done with the show. hundred percent agree with that. Totally love that. You guys don't realize how many calories are in dressings though. Sometimes these, these freaking salads can be 1200, 1500 calories. If you're not, that's, you're that's not why they attention. taste so good. That's right. Yeah. So, but like I said, pick one of those things to indulge on and then the rest of it, keep it clean, right? Bring yeah. your own food or whatever it might be. Pick the vegetables, you know, whatever it might be. So, that way you can still enjoy your holidays. You can still enjoy the parties, but then you don't leave feeling like a bag of dicks. So <laughs> just saying, like, <laughs> I mean, I, I and, and I feel like, I think like we all have to go through that one time where we feel like complete ass and then we won't do it again. <laughs> like that's how, I, that's how I felt on Thursday. I was like, I feel like absolute dog shit. Yeah. Like, oh, I felt like, I felt terrible for two days. I felt like shit. So I was like, you know, I'm not going to do that again. It's like, just worth stupid. it. Yeah. It's just stupid. I'm like, I had fun that night. Don't get me wrong. I had a great time, you know, all that kind of stuff. But the two days afterwards, mm -mm. 
Yeah. And not only do you feel like shit, but because you feel like shit now, the next two days, your training sucks too. Right. Your sleep is off. You're That's not right. getting good, good lifts in the gym because you're tired, you're fatigued, your body, et yep. cetera. So is it worth that risk versus reward? Yep. Um, Absolutely. Something else that people don't think about too, again, with the alcohol is your body thinks uh, your body registers alcohol as a toxin. Mm -hmm. And most alcohol cannot be used as an energy source, but for every one gram of alcohol, it produces seven calories. So think about it this way. What are we usually doing when we're drinking? We're eating. Yeah. So the way I explain this to people is if you're drinking and eating off plan and your body's saying, oh, alcohol is present. This is a toxin. I mm -hmm. need to get rid of this now. Okay. So what does it do now with the food? It kind of stores the food and moves that off to the side and starts heavily relying on metabolizing that alcohol to get it out of the yeah. system. So that's where weight gain it, that for yeah. heavy drinkers is really prevalent because your body is so focused on metabolizing and getting that alcohol out of your system. It can't really function on these calories. That's also yeah. why your, your, your energy is low because food provides energy. But if it's not processing that energy and it's just versus storing it, this is where you start to feel like shit as well. So yeah. yeah, just keep all those things in mind. You know, at the end of the day, moderation is key. You're allowed to have mm -hmm. something which yep. will give you that taste and that, you know, that aura of food and alcohol, but you don't have to go to that binging or that, that extreme. It's going to be there tomorrow. It's going to be there the right. next day. It's going to be there next weekend. If you want it, allow mm -hmm. yourself that time and space. And you're going to feel a lot better mentally and a lot more successful if yes. you're able to walk away. And I promise you, there's been times where I've walked away and I'm like, God damn, like, I wish I could have that. But an hour later, I'm like, I didn't need that. Didn't and I'm really it. proud yeah. I, I didn't. Exactly. Yeah. So, if you, And listen, if you give yourself that hour and you're still like, man, I really want it. Well, maybe you need to honor that thought and go have it. But yeah. most of the time, I would say eight out of 10 times you walk away, you're going to be proud you did it. Yep. And I'll also say this too, like you, not only in the inflammation aspect of it, but I don't know about you when I, when I eat like crap or I drink or whatever, I see it in my skin too. Yes. So your skin is the largest organ on your body, you know? So if you're seeing problems in your skin, there's probably something going on internally, Internally, you know? So I realized this when I went through prep, you know, I, I tend to cut out all alcohol and everything like that when I'm six weeks out. Up until I'm six weeks out, and I'm out at a social event or something like that, I'll have a glass of wine, you know, again, limiting what I'm doing. But at six weeks, I just stop, you know, that's it. We're done. And I noticed specifically this last prep that as soon as I stopped all that, my skin, I didn't have another blemish. I was like, well, damn. Mm. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> like That happens a lot, lot post-show with the sugar. Yep. So, and I, you know, I realized some things too, like you, you figure this stuff out as you go along. Like I have a, a mild allergy to milk chocolate. I'm fine with, um, with dark chocolate, but I'm not okay with milk chocolate. Um, this past spring, I made these really, intense <laughs> chocolate fudge brownies and they were amazing like you could get them at like a freaking gourmet bakery like for people that don't know if i didn't go to school for music i was going to go to be a culinary uh, culinary chef a pastry chef so oh, i didn't um, know that How yeah cool. i was i was really into baking and all that stuff when i was younger so i love doing it but obviously <laughs> don't do it a lot for those reasons because right I bake is really fucking good <laughs> and it's hard to not eat it just saying so, um, so anyway, so I made these cupcakes and they were incredible cupcakes, but they were all milk chocolate and all this kind of stuff. My face has never broken out so bad as it did after I had those cupcakes and it lasted for a while. And I was like, this is not good. I was like, this is, I'm like, this is terrible. You know what I mean? So, and again, I'm like, okay, well, I know I can't do that again. So guess who hasn't had milk chocolate since, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm like, dark chocolate is fine for whatever reason. I'm, I don't have the same reaction when I have dark chocolate. I think part of it is because you, it's not, it's more natural, not a lot of refined sugars. And then also I don't feel like you can eat a lot of dark chocolate, whereas you can eat a lot of milk chocolate. So, yeah. but anyway, going back to, if you start seeing those effects in other ways, you, you understand, like you said, it's a toxin. Yeah. You're putting a toxin in your body whenever you're having alcohol, when you're ever whenever you're having those things, and it's gonna come out one way or another. You know, and you start seeing it on your skin, you start seeing it ages you, all those kinds of things too. Like it's pretty self-evident that it's not good for you. Yeah. 
a really easy way that you can test your internal health with this too is like if you're noticing breakouts and things like that and you're having a suspicion it might be from you eating like an a-hole for the last week mm -hmm. start start tracking your fasted glu blood glucose i yeah. know when my face starts breaking out or there's something internally going on because i've been eating poorly i notice that my fasted glucose is much much higher and i'm like mm. my body's not processing right now i need to kind of pull off or i need to be better at my nutrient timing to taper my carbs down later in the evening whatever that looks like but that's a very simple tool you could buy on Amazon. Start tracking that now, getting kind of a reading of what your normal fasted is. And then if you start to not feel good, I guarantee you that that glucose is over 100 when you start checking, yeah. you know, something is off. And then you kind of know that you need to be implementing some things, a glucose agent like berberine or uh, citrus bigamont or revives glucose are all great options. Um, and then just, you know, really being mindful of food selection, alcohol intake, and nutrient timing. That could, it's very easy if you're yeah. honest and real with yourself. Some people though know and see these signs and symptoms, but they're like, hey, I want to continue so the way anyway. that I'm eating. Exactly. Well, okay, well then you're going to have to be okay with the breakouts on your face and the bloating 24 seven. With every right. choice comes a reward or a consequence. So you That's just right. have to be with yourself on that. Um, and, and, and that goes back to like managing the holidays. You know what I mean? You, you, you got to know what you're okay with and what you're not. You know, Absolutely. if you're, if you're okay with all those side effects, then have at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I, I'm not, you know, and, I, and I also, you know, I also talk about, we've talked about this before. Like I said, I, I am in my forties and like stuff I feel like hits you harder when you get older. Yeah. So it's like, you've got to, you've got to be careful. Like you can't recover like you could when you're in your twenties, you know, it just doesn't, it doesn't work, you yeah. know? So you, you've got to be mindful of that as well. Stuff that I could do 10 years ago, I can't do now, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and people say it all the time, like, I can't believe you're 42, like great genes. I'm like, yeah, but it's also how I live my life every day. <laughs> it's like, the choices you know, you made over the past right. 15 years that that's has gotten right. you to your 40, 40s mm -hmm. and you're much healthier and you're in a, a place of a 30 year old, you know? That's right. Like, and that what time. you just said, my husband says that all the time. He's like, whatever you do in your 20s shows up in your 30s. Whatever you do I in say your that 30s too. shows up in your 40s. So yes. be mindful that whatever you're doing now is setting you up for 10 years from now. So always think about that too. You know, if you want to, if you want to be healthier as you get older, you got to start now, you know, you yeah. got to start now. It just, this is not a free, if you're in your 20s right now, this is not a free pass. <laughs> Now's the time to make sure when you're in your 30s, you're yeah. living your best life. In your 30s, just keep you just keep that rolling. I say the same yep. thing too on a monthly basis. Whatever we do this month, you're gonna see next month. And That's those right. choices, daily choices, monthly choices add up over time. It's something so small people say all the time, but when you really think about that, yep. those choices that you make every single day are gonna affect you in 10 years from now. Yep. That's huge. Mm -hmm. And what could you be a small choice you could be making today that has a catapult effect from 10 years from now? Yep. Yep. So this actually um, brings up another point that I was thinking about too. Do you ever put things in place during the holidays or during your reverse to keep you on track? Meaning I was talking to one of my clients yesterday and uh, talking about how she's got different um, like we've got a posing class that we're doing in two weeks. And then, you know, some people do photo shoots, things like that. Things that keep you like, okay, I have to stay on plan because I have to look good at this particular date or this particular thing. Like I do photo shoots. I've got a shoot set up for this coming week. Um, you know, knowing I'm going to be teaching group posing, like the fact that I am in this industry and I'm around people all the time, it keeps me pretty regulated, you know what I mean? But for just a regular person, that's not, you know, maybe their business isn't in this industry or something like that. What are some measures that you would put in place to kind of keep yourself regimented as you go yeah. through the, the reverse and the that's holiday a great season? That's a great question. And we did talk about that last week is setting new goals for yourself. Mm -hmm. But we can go now what that means. So for me personally, I told you guys, this is the first reverse I've ever fallen, following, fall, I've ever followed. followed. followed thank you. <laughs> so in previous years, I, I have never done that. I have never had a goal. I did tell you guys at this time I had the date. I, I, yes. I picked eight weeks out, which we're almost to. We're on December 7th, and I, I gave myself to December 15th. So that was something that I did. 
knowing that I was going to be moving and moving the gym, I knew Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to have time for photo shoots or anything like that. However, I do have lots of events in January. Cuties. We have the all women's seminar. Uh, We have our Fit Body Fusion Coaches Day coming up where we do all of our media and things like Mm -hmm. that. So knowing that these things were coming up, I want to look good for these events. Yes. Plus, my biggest thing as a coach is always leading by example. How can I yell at my team or encourage them to follow a reverse diet if I am not doing the same walk? That's so right. if I'm going to encourage my team to do something, I have to be the leader and I have to step up and be the one to lead by example. So that is my why. Now, what I give to my clients after a show is I give them the date you know, giving them a, have that date eight weeks out from your calendar, et cetera. I do encourage photo shoots. Yeah. If they, if they have a spouse, um, if they want to do one on their own, I tell them to treat themselves. They yeah. have worked this hard. Yeah. Treat yourselves four weeks post show. So why do I say that? I'm kind of giving away some of my secrets here. I say four <laughs> weeks post show because I tell them they probably don't want photos of them that stagely. You know, that's, Nobody reacts well that way. You want you want to kind of look with a little bit of body fat kind of in yes. the middle, but also it's four weeks post-show. So that keeps them straight and narrow for at least four weeks, which to me is the most sensitive time period. Yes, That's where agreed. most people get off the, the rails. What, if you can get past four weeks post-show, you're in a much better headspace mentally. Food's up a little bit higher now. You're, you're kind of leveling out slightly. So four weeks is like the crucial period. Um, in addition to that, I tell them with uh, trips, Schedule a trip for yourself, but try to do it on that eight-week time to to um, reward yourself. Go yeah. enjoy your show. Go enjoy yeah. that you your reverse diet. And then when you get to that point, I tell them, you can go and enjoy your vacation. You're going to be able to go and eat what you want. And again, at that point, they're in a much better headspace. They yes. still, still see themselves lean. Their hunger cues are a little bit more appropriate. And they want to stay consistent so they look good at, for that vacation and honor themselves on that vacation and not come back 15 pounds up because yes. they decided to blow it. Those are some things that I give my team and kind of how I deal with that myself. I know you do a lot of photo shoots. Do you do Mm -hmm. do anything else? So I do the photo shoots, but also um, there's a reason why I, you know, I do this all the time. I put my progress up on my Instagram. I mean, that keeps accountability. Keeps me accountable. I'm like, I know that I got to put this back up there on Thursday, so I better be in shape. You know what I mean? That's a good one. That's one thing that I do, you know, consistently all the time. And it's, it's not even as much about putting my content out there as it is about me staying accountable to it so that I know I'm going to have to do it. You know, I love Um, that. That is a big one for me. And so that that's something I do year round. You know what I mean? So it keeps me on track when I'm off season, when I'm in reverse, when I'm in prep, all of the things, all of them. Yeah. I love that. And I am trying Um, to get better at that too, because I respect the pros that do that. And you especially do it all year round, no matter what. And that's a lot of, that I get from people and what I read on Reddit is like, oh, pros are always, you know, post when they're lean, but where do they go when they're off season? Yep. I mm-hmm. hate that. I hate yep. that because we should be celebrating our bodies in all stages and showing amateurs that it's okay to be in your off season. We are not That's supposed right. to be 8% body fat all year round. That's right. But we have to be the one, the standard. We're the ones yep. that have to show up for that. Yep. But I love that. And idea. also, you know, and also finding where your, your happy spot is too. Like, um, like you were saying before about the four weeks post show for your shoot. It was the same thing with me. One of my photographers actually contacted me last, last week or the week before. It's like when we need to do some Christmas stuff. I was like, yeah, I was like, give me a minute. Cause I got too many veins right now. <laughs> I was like, this is gross. I was like, just, just let me, let me, let me get a little bit of fluff. <laughs> just a little. Yeah. And then, and then get I feel again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like I like the way that I look when I'm like a month out from a show. Once I start getting into that one month out and everything starts coming down, you start seeing all the vascularity coming out and stuff. I'm like, Ugh. you know, so it's like when I get into that spot, like right now, I feel like I'm in a pretty good spot. I could put a couple more pounds on and I'd be all right. Um, I've still got vascularity everywhere when I'm in the gym, but when I'm just like hanging out, it's not as pre- prevalent as it was. <laughs> it's like not just running through my stomach all, all, you know, all day long. So it's like, that's where I feel good. You know, that's where I feel like I look like I'm in shape, but I'm not like gross. <laughs> it's not <laughs> an it's extreme. Like... <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I'm sorry, but I, I think I, I don't like vascularity. Like it's cool. Like it's, it's fun to see, but 
just in everyday life, it's not it's not what I find attractive. It's, personally. it's a sign of stage lean. Yes, and again, correct. your goal right now is not to be stage lean. That's it's right. to find a healthy body fat to to maintain that. That's right. So yes, yeah, so photo shoots. Um, and also, like you said, I feel like because of the holidays, you tend to have a lot more social engagements, right? I don't want to look like shit at these social engagements. I want yes. to be able to wear my pretty dresses. I want to be able to look, you know, pretty, you know, I yeah. want to be able to look like I'm in shape and things like that. And people know that I'm a, that I'm an athlete and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I want to look like. So, you know, when I start getting a little puffy, I don't, I don't like that anymore. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I'm going to stay reg regimented. Yes. Um, you know, and I do, like I said, I, I'm one of those people, we've talked about this before. I do weigh myself every day because it helps me to mentally know where I am. Um, I don't blow up really fast, but like, for example, when I put that inflammation on and I was up 10 pounds, I'm like, I know this is inflammation. You know what I mean? So now I got to get myself in check and pound my water and make sure that I flush it all out. and I'm good. You know, like I said, even now I weigh, I weigh less now than I did on stage in Hawaii still. That's crazy. <laughs> so I'm just like, Wait, yep. you know, yep. yeah, <laughs> like, but you wouldn't like... know that if you didn't weigh <laughs> yes. yourself every day, Correct. and it is that's that self accountability. And I do think that the people that not for everybody, but the people that avoid the scale, why are you avoiding the scale? Mm -hmm. It's out of sight, out of mind. If you're not willing to have that check in with yourself, yep. knowing that you're not following your plan and overeating, that's a problem yes. because you're not having that daily accountability, accountability with yourself. And I guarantee you, if you're eating off plan for three days and you step on that scale and you see it's five pounds up, you're going to change that tone right. real quick, real, that's real right. quick. Absolutely. And that's just your self check with yourself. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, that was the same thing when I, you know, said after that free meal, I was like, nope, we're not doing that again. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, nope, I don't like that number <laughs> at <Got> all. <laughs> Like it's going. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things too. It's like when you have goals set, you know, even though, you know, my goal of getting back on stage isn't until the end of, end of the summer kind of thing, it's still a goal and it's going to come fast. You know, like I, I sat there and I was plotting out my time frame and like how much time I would have to reverse, how much time I have for off season and how much time I would have to go back into a prep. And I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, it's over like, like that now. <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, by, by the time you're in it, you're out of it. Yeah. I was like, you know, one of the girls, um, uh, Jamie Sterling, who does the uh, yeah. show in yes. Indiana. And she's like, oh, you should do my show because we're going to have you plus and open bikini. I was like, when is your show? She's like, end of June, June 29th. I was like, oh. yeah. Yeah. June 29th. I was like, I actually think that would be a great show to do. But I, I think that might be pushing my pushing my limit a little bit. Yeah. You know, and I was like, I was like, I, I told her, I was like, I was looking at July, August earliest. I was like, that's what I was looking at. I was like, that's where I'm at too. Yeah. I was like, I, I mean, I would love to do her show. I would love to do it, but I just don't, I just don't know if I'm going to have time to, to make improvements between now and then. And I said, you know, and I've said this, I was like, I, I feel like we, where my body is right now, it's competitive in the, in the master's arena, but at the same time, I don't want to get on stage looking the same. I want to <laughs> get on stage looking better. So in order for, in order for me to do that, I got to take some time, you know? So but it's like you start sitting back and you're like, okay, that seems like June 29th seems like it's a it's a long way away. But when you start plotting out the weeks and the days, it's not. No, it's right it, around the corner. In competitive bodybuilding land, it's it's yeah. right here. It's here. Yeah, yeah. And people don't understand too. I think a lot of times, like when you're a female and you're in this this industry, a bikini body is not an easy body to achieve. Right. A lot of people yeah. think it is, you know, I posted up some photos from when I did it back in 2010 and the difference between the criteria for bikini back then versus what it is now. Bikini back then was just a swimsuit model look, you know, like photo shoot ready, go, you know, totally different. You could do a six weeks of dieting and get on stage when, when we did bikini back then. Now you got to have a good three to five years of basic lifting and training towards this division to even think about getting on stage. And if you want to be competitive, you, you have to be working hard for a long period of time, you yes. know? And um, so people, people underestimate how long it takes to build muscle. People underestimate how long it takes to reshape a frame. Preach. You know? <laughs> I see it all the time. People think, well, I took a year off stage. I was like, no, you didn't. <laughs> right. What, or, <laughs> or you did, but you need more. Right. Well, well, and here's what people don't understand too. It's like, okay, so if I start, let's just say I wanted to compete again in November next year. Right. Well, however long you dieted is how long you have to reverse. Right. So 
I dieted for 16 weeks, which means I need to reverse for 16 weeks. Right. And then and if you're going to do another 16 week prep, you've got eight months right there. <laughs> you and know, none of that is building. No. Nope. So the only time building. that you were actually Cutting. building in that whole year was four months. That's it. Right. That's the only time that you had. Now, you know, don't get me wrong. We talked about this before. You can gain mass after a show, blah, blah, blah. We get all that. But in reality, the only solid time that you just built muscle was four months. Yeah. Right. And as a female, especially who, depending on how many drugs you're on, let's just be real. Yeah. You, you know, you might be able to retain one to two pounds of that muscle. Maybe that, that is the biggest misconception. You're right. You're correct. But that's the mm -hmm. biggest misconception of bodybuilding. I built for a year. I'm surely going to have six pounds of muscle. Listen, Hunter Labrada takes a year off stage and that man can't even get six pounds lean muscle easily. And we're yep. talking about a huge mm -hmm. male bodybuilder, not natural. Right. So for us as females, we're really only seeing one to two pounds of actual lean muscle mass from a from a six to one month to one year building phase. And again, the question is natural, not natural. Obviously, yes. those things affect that. But if you're natural, you really can't expect more than that. And that's okay. Yes. But yeah. just be realistic of that body weight, really two pounds of that is real lean muscle tissue. Yeah. The rest of it's yeah. water, sodium, and fat, you know? So yeah. it's hard. It's, it's a hard Well, it's like I said before, like my, my stage weight and I, you know, I, last year I got off stage in June and then I didn't start prep again until July. So I had a legitimate year, year. off, you know, um, that, that, till I started prep again. And when I got back on stage, by the time I got to Japan, I was a pound lighter than I was in New York, which was May. And then Dallas, I was up two pounds because of my period. Hmm. Go figure. That was June. So I was up two yeah. pounds. <laughs> yeah, we knew that. <laughs> so, you know, so I don't really count that. I know. I don't really count that as my stage weight. My stage weight was probably 140 if I didn't have the inflammation versus, you know, 141, almost 142. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I look more at New York as being my, my stage weight, which was 140. Um, but when I went into Japan, I was 139. So, I put on muscle. You can clearly see I put on a lot of muscle, but the weight didn't reflect that, you know, because it was lean mass and I was able to pull off more fat, more fat. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta remember all those kinds of things too. It's like, you're not going to just automatically be this huge bodybuilder after a year off. You're just not, you're going to be no. probably around the same weight. You're just going to be composed a little differently. That's actually a really great point because I had a time hop come up uh, late November from my very first show in 2019 and going into peak week, I was sitting at 119, which is my same weight at the Olympia this past year, 119.8, completely different look, completely different. completely different look. You have to think my first show, I was mostly fat and very little muscle, mm -hmm. but I came in four years later, the same at the Olympia, just with a completely different body composition. Now that's, that's a big, um, uh, I, coincidence, I guess, but yeah. just, just to be clear, like you could have a, I have obviously so much more muscle and so much less body fat, but the weight is relatively the same. And that's where you, you know, people get so caught up in the scale and I get it. It's a tool, but that's it. It's just mm -hmm. a tool. It's a tool to use. Yep. And especially in the bikini criteria, I tell people this all the time, you know, girls are always like, well, what are we shooting for when we prep? I don't know. I'm don't looking know. at your stage photos each mm -hmm. week. And once I see the look that we need and that we're going for, then I know we're ready. And then whatever your weight is, then that happens to be your stage weight. But truly, it does not matter. Nope. And it's nope. not something we can look at year after year after year as a progress point for the division. It's are you adding more muscle? Are you adding more muscle in the right places? And are you sticking within the criteria? That's what you got to stick with in your improvement. Okay. Because you know, the other thing too, when you look back, like you were just saying, when I won my pro card in figure and my stage weight, the day of my, I won my pro card was 137. So we're talking two pounds, <laughs> two pounds difference. And theoretically, and I'm a heavier division. Correct. In yeah. Figure, and I was, right? and I was 137 in figure. Mm -hmm. And again, yeah. oh, I carry way times. more muscle now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I carry and way more muscle now. And the, the divisions themselves have yes. increased the, the amount of muscle that they're looking at, right? And that's where we have to think of every year, too. The criteria is going to change a little bit more based off who wins the Olympia, what the Manions decide to change. They just did a bunch of changes this year with the men's side. Yep. I wouldn't be surprised if late next year we're going to be hearing about some changes on the girls' side, too. We just have yep. to keep that open. 
Um, yep. So that's where it's, you know, trying not, you know, to keep yourself within that bikini box. Mm-hmm. It's hard. Yeah. It's a very hard division. It is. It is. And, you know, like I said, I mean, it's just, you got, you've got to remember too, that going back to setting these little goals because they keep you within that box. You Absolutely. Know, if, you get, if you get too far outside of that box, it's really hard to come back to it. So, you know, allowing yourself, like, like we talked about before, just all of these little strategy pieces, put into play what's going to work for you. You know, if it, try things too. It may not work. Maybe, maybe doing the, you know, scheduling those photo shoots and stuff like that. Maybe that's not your thing. Try it. If it doesn't work, okay, try something else. You know, give yourself opportunities to try to, to keep yourself accountable. Again, like the social media posts and things like that too. Keeping your coach in the off season. I see so many girls that are Good like, one. Peace out when you go Good into one. reverse and we go into off season. Keep your coach. I'm sorry. Like even with posing too, so many girls don't want to put the bikini on and get in front of the mirror or get in front of their posing coach. Do it. it that's, it's hard for me. It's hard for me. Yeah. That's one of my it things. It keeps you accountable. You know, again, that's why I'm doing the Sundays with Sean on the 15th or the 17th. It's December. Everybody's out of prep. Nobody's going to be going back into prep until January if they're going for March shows. You know what I mean? But I had so many girls reach out and be like, can we please do a group class in, in December? Because that's going to keep me accountable to my goals. Do Love it. Love that. Absolutely. You know, yeah. if you know you've got to put a bikini on in a couple of weeks, you're probably not going to go overeat all that much. Yeah. A hundred percent. You know? Yeah. So those are the things that you can, you can put into place. And again, some of them may not work for you, but try you know, yeah. see what works, see what does trying is better than not having any yes. plan at all. Yeah. And I would rather you try and it be unsuccessful than just said, I didn't really did think about anything. I just winged it. That, yeah. That's uh, preparation for failure, in my yes. opinion. I also yeah. think it's important to say too that allowing yourself one day off plan is not going to blow all of your progress. So if you're someone like me that you're you know really strict on yourself and you're not even wanting to have that flexibility. It's okay. It's okay to allow mm-hmm. yourself one day of flexibility and be real with yourself. The next yes. day, the scale is going to be up. The yes. scale is going to be up from sodium, water, inflammation. It will come back down as long as you don't let it get out of hand for multiple. Perfect days. example right here. Of what I told you guys about this past week, you know, I mean, yes. it was discouraging to see that scale go that high. Let me tell you. Scary. <laughs> I was like, huh. Yeah. You're like, is this, like thing, no. is this thing on? Is it no, okay? This can't be right. Step on it again. Yeah. <laughs> But <laughs> turned you real quick and you're now you're down and even less than. Yes. Because you yeah. just got right back on plan. You got back on yeah. your water. And it, it was a kick in the ass. Good. Yeah, it was a kick in the ass. It was like, okay, I got to make sure I stay on point. You know, I yeah. got to make sure I keep this right. You know, I don't want to go way off board, like I said before. And being on this podcast, I've been very open with you guys about what my goals are, what I want to do. And if I blow it myself, I'm just... I'm just screwing it up for myself. You know what I mean? Like, that's just stupid. Like I I'm, I'm keeping myself accountable to you guys too. You know what I mean? Like that's part of it. Yes. Keep yourself accountable. Keep yourself accountable. Just like you would in any other situation. You know, you go into, into your job, into your work, you set you have goals a bus. Yeah. yeah, that you have to hit. You've got goals you have to hit, things you have to do at work or you get fired. There's just like, that's just what works. You know what I mean? You're going to get fired from being a pro. Well, now you're, you're always a pro, but you know what I'm saying? You're Absolutely. no longer going to look like a pro anymore, you know? Yeah. And, and again, going back to, that's not saying you have to stay stage lean all the time. You know, it's okay to go up and wait. I like my off season better, but people still know that I'm a pro athlete when I'm in my off season. Cause I still got the muscle tone. I still got the curves. I still got those, those, those shapes and things like that, that don't go away. I just don't have all the veins. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> I know, right? Thank as you, I, Lord. As I see both of, both of our- I know. We're, we're oh, like, oh. oh. Still <laughs> lean. I know. Still I'm like, lines. <laughs> uh, my forehead, I'll tell you what, like when I do like um, like reverse delts or something like that, I'm like bent over and I'm like, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> it's terrible. So bad. Pump in the face. <laughs> For real. Like you see right face. now, like the more I laugh, the more they come out. Oh, come out. Goodness, Lord. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so, oh, man. You mentioned the whole, like, posing thing is hard for you when you're in off season. So what do you make yourself get up and pose or what do you do? I do. And I don't like it, but I do, you know, and that's just me being vulnerable right now, guys, to be honest with you. Like I'm, um, I'm struggling right now a little bit, like just being post show and body image and 
but Drew's laughing at me because he still says I'm lean, which I probably am. Yeah. Um, but it's hard. It's yeah. it's really hard to see yourself go from one extreme to that middle, you know? Yeah. Um, and I told my told Drew a couple nights ago, like I just gotta get through this next like couple weeks of where it's like, you know, I had shredded abs to like just comfortable body weight, you know, and just getting yeah. myself into that mix. Um, yeah, it's just hard to like, you know, as an, as a pro athlete, you just feel like when you put a bikini on, sometimes it should look a certain way, right? Like, because like when you, usually when you're putting that bikini on, it's like exciting and prep, you're like, what lines do I have today? And blah, yeah. blah, blah. And now you're seeing those things disappear. Yeah. Um, but something that I really have to work on this off season, it's a continuous progress for me. And it's one that, um, that I've been working on is stage presence and, mm -hmm. um, I'm definitely working on some strategies and things like that, but the only way that I'm going to be able to practice that is practicing now. You know, That's prep right. is not the time to start practicing your posing. That's right. Now is the time to start practicing the posing so that when you are depleted and your brain's not working and everything is forced, you yep. could just kind of go into autopilot with those things. Mm -hmm. So now's the time that I need to be doing that. Um, so yeah, it is, it's, it's difficult, but it's necessary. You know, but yeah. again, that's another way that I keep myself accountable is yeah. putting that suit on in the off season, because if I don't like what I'm seeing in the mirror, well, maybe that's a problem and maybe I'm yeah. off on my plan. Right. Yep. So that's a way that I need to be accountable. And I agree with you too. I loved, I love that you brought that up of posting more on social media. You know, I posted my uh, check-ins from last week. I'm going to be posting my check-ins from this week as well. And I think that that's important. It's important for me to show up, but it's important for our viewers and for uh, my clients to see that as well, because I'm human too. And that's what's right. normal, what's not, what did I do well this week? What did I didn't? And keep keeping showing up that way. Yep. I agree. Um, you know, I was, I was laughing about the whole bikini thing. Cause like I put my, my suit on this morning to take my photos and like the hip straps don't sit quite the same way as they did. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they, I'm just like, stay up. <laughs> I was like, don't do that. Yes. You know what I mean? It's like just little things like that. And you're like, Oh, you know, but it's a good thing at the same time too. Cause I got to grow glutes and shit. So it's like, okay, maybe they shouldn't be sitting here. You know, they, they gotta, they gotta move. But you know, again, it's one of those things. It's like, Oh, it just sat so much better two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. And it almost makes you feel like you're doing something wrong, right? Because you go yeah. from this one extreme yeah. checking in and the suit should be fitting looser and you should be having to adjust the straps yeah. tighter. And you should, again, new lines and da, da, da. And then you're checking in now each week and it's like, oh, now I need to loosen the straps. I don't see lines. I have a little bit more body fat. Mm -hmm. Is this okay? Is this right? Da, da, da. It's, it's, a it's just transferring from one phase to the other in your yeah. mindset and what the goal is right now. Yep. And it's hard. It's a hard transition. And it, to be honest, I think this takes more than four weeks. I think this takes yeah. six to eight. Weeks. I think that's what, about that eight week out is where you're like, okay, yeah. we're cruising now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but it is, it's, it's very difficult. The, the bikinis post show, especially oh, yeah. those first four weeks post show. You're just like, Oh my God. Uh, I was like, all right. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> Glutes are growing. Yeah, they are. I mean, they, they need to, I need more density in that lower half of the body. So that's, what's going to happen. It's not going to sit the same way, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I tell girls um, that all the time when they're like, my clothes don't fit, fit the same anymore. Good. We're supposed to be growing right now. I right. hope your butt's growing and you can't fit them into those jeans. That's a good that's thing. Right. Well, I think too, like I was going to mention this too, I think right post show is when you can start seeing those things that, um, that you wish you could improve upon and you can start doing it right away. Like I talked about with the posing thing, my transitions and stuff like that. Those like right now is a good time to do that because my, my stomach is still flat and I can see what it's going to look like when I do those transitions and all that kind of stuff. Um, I know one of the things I need to improve upon too, is just my overall flexibility. So, you know, I'm focusing a lot more on, on, on stretching and stuff like that. I went and got my, um, my body work done this week and I literally was going to cry half the time because Moses was like, Moses, my, my massage therapist, okay. he's like getting into the freaking glutes and the hamstrings. I was, he's he, at one point, like my glute like popped. He goes, Whoa, I was like, I know. He's like, you're re he's like, you're really tight. I was like, I know I'm really tight. You needed that. <laughs> I did. It was, it was like, and I actually felt a lot better afterwards and I just need to do it more, you know, I just yeah. need to do it more. And that's the biggest thing. Like I, I know the recovery thing takes this back seat for me until I get to be about that six week out mark from a show, because you have to, like, that's when I start like with all the ups and salt baths and really pay, paying attention to, to stretching because your body starts hurting, you know what yeah, I mean? Because you're gross. Yes. Versus when you're in your reverse and your off season and all those kinds of things, that's the time to be focusing on it, to make improvements upon it. 
it doesn't hurt as bad. Your body's not aching and things like that, but you, you need to do it so that when you get into prep, you've already made your body looser. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So in improvement season, you're literally breaking that muscle fiber down, yeah. grow it, and then it's sewing itself back together. Right. So every time you do that each week, think about how much tighter and tighter and tighter that muscle fiber is. And if you are not right. working actively on that recovery, you're just going to keep feeling very tight. Now, not only is your posing affected, obviously mm -hmm. we need flex, but your training is going to be affected right. as well. And your growth, your growth. Yep. Everything's if affected. If your muscle cannot be malleable and move through the range of motion right. that it should, or if something is so tight now it's inhibiting the other muscle, synergis, agnes, we could get in all that, then you're you're leaving growth on the table for something that's yep. very simple. Go get body work done once a week, or I'm sorry, yep. once a month, more if you can afford it or can or have the luxury. But number two, foam roll. Foam that's roll, right. prep, prime, use some band work to warm up that area. Yes. Epsom salt bath, sauna, warm, stretching, so simple. But these are things yep. that you should be gearing for in that off season. That's right. That's right. So, you know, that for me, that's where I'm focusing more attention because I just didn't put, I didn't put enough attention on it last year. Yeah. I, put, I put a little bit more on it last year than typical, but I need more, just need yeah. more. So, yeah. you know, it is what it me is. Me too. We could all be so, better at that. Yep. And then I'm starting up with the waist trainer again. So. Um, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I, uh, I think we, we've talked about this before uh, as far as what uh, waist trainers are good for, what they're not. Um, for me. I looked back at some of my photos from five years ago and I was like, well, you know, I have a lot more muscle on me now than when I was competing five years ago. So there's that, but I can also see where my obliques have gotten a little bit thicker, um, you know, because I'm training lower body three days a week. So I can see that my body is, you know, my core is, is, is using being used as a stabilizing thing. And I can see my obliques getting a little thicker. So for me, I'm going to start using the, um, waist trainer again to try to atrophy that a little bit. Um, my stomach's flat. It's tight. There's no issue with that. But again, my obliques get thick pretty quickly. And that's just, just that I had that issue when I first started competing too. So I used a waist trainer back then to atrophy them back then. So I'm just going to try and do it again. Um, the, and I don't have an issue either. Like in bikini, they don't want to see a full on six pack, but they do want to see some definition. So if you have really washed out abs, that's something that a waist trainer can do. It can wash your abs out, make you look like you have no definition at all. So if you have washed out abs and waist trainer is probably not a good idea for you, because it's just going to make it worse. For me, I'm, I mean, I have etched in abs, so I can stand to lose a little bit of that and it's okay. You know, I can atrophy a little bit of that and it's okay just to bring my waistline in a little bit tighter. Um, so I'm just going to use it during my um, training. You know, it's, it's a long one. This is the other thing too, that I think people make a mistake about is they get small ones that hit the small part of your waist and then you pooch out from underneath um, or pooch out from above. The one that I have goes from my, my um, breastbone all the way down to my hips. So it covers the whole area. It keeps me tight where it needs to be tight and all those kinds of things. So it takes away some of the pressure when I'm actually um, training. I think some of the buildup has come not just from, you know, training lower body, but also back because I train back really pretty heavy. I okay. love training. Back. I love training back. I know I don't need it, but I love it. <laughs> bikini, bikini, they don't, they don't, they don't judge you on your muscularity in your back, but that's one of my favorite parts to lift. So listen, taper is very important. So taper is important. Yes. Back is important. Yes. Lot, lot, lot development. Yeah. So I feel like I, I brace a lot with my core when I'm doing back. So um, I think that's what that's one area where I could really probably improve that with the waist trainer. So we'll see. The reason why I, I stopped wearing it last time is because it was affecting my digestion. So um, that's also a problem for some people. And it, at that point, I felt like it wasn't worth wearing the waist trainer. So that's why I stopped. So if that becomes an issue this time around too, same thing. I just, I'll just stop. So now your goal right now is just to wear it when training, when you had, wore it before and you had digestional issues, were you wearing it more during the day than no. just, tra just, just training. training still? Yep. Okay. Yep. So that just will be a training. Sure that you yeah, have training and cardio, training and cardio. Um, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not wearing it during cardio right now because I don't need it for the sweat aspect of it. That's not something I need right now. If I was in prep, it'd be different, yeah. but I'm not. Yeah. Um, I, I want it just for the aspect of not using my 
core to pull with a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? So I would be interested to see if now that you're not using it with cardio, if your digestion will be better because yeah. uh, cardio affects a lot of motility with digestion. That's yeah. why a lot of people could go to the bathroom after morning cardio with some coffee, yep. some water, some movement. So I would, I would be interested if you just wore it now for training where you're yeah. moving, but not as much or sitting on the machines and things like that. If maybe your digestion stays more regular, hopefully. Yeah. I agree I'm with hoping. you though. I wear a weight belt uh, with all my training, upper yeah. body, lower body. If if I am not wearing a belt, it is because I'm doing my prime and my warm up, um, or I'm doing core abdominal, which I only do in, in season four weeks out from stage just to, yeah. just to get pump back into them. But I, I'm the same. I have etched out abs. Um, I will say that the la uh, my waistline used to be very, very thin or, and small. Um, it still is, but I, I did notice this year was a little bit more blocky. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was more digestional Okay. Uh, issues. Okay. Um, it, because once I switched to the meal plan mid mid season, I was getting tighter, but I'm also eating a lot more going into my shows now than yeah. I did in recent in recent Same. years. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. just about finding that balance. Yep. So, you know, that's, that's something I think that you just have to go person by person on with the, with the waist trainer and all that kind of stuff. You know what I yes. mean? So, and like I said, uh, you know, you've got pluses and minuses to anything you do. So you just have to weigh and determine which one is more important. You know, yes. like I said, if my digestion starts getting screwed up again, I'll stop wearing the waist trainer. That's not yes. worth it to me. I want to feel good. You know what I mean? So, um, but I think and digestion if I just, is good for a tight waist. Yes. You know, don't want to let that yeah. go. And I think if I just use it for training, I think it will do what I want it to do. You know what I mean? I don't, just so you guys know, waist trainer is not going to change your structure. It's not going to give you this teeny tiny waist if you don't have one. Um, but it can, like, again, it can help with the, the muscle atrophy and things like that too. So, um, yes. so we'll see. Um, I, and, and it can be overdone as well. Cause like I said, I have estrogen abs now, but years ago when I wore waist trainer, it washed me out a lot. And I actually got feedback from Sandy that I needed some, needed some development in my abs. So, um, there is a, a plus and minus to everything. So you have to be very aware of that. So again, going back to posing and checking in and doing all those kinds of things keeps you, keeps you on that path. Like if I start seeing that my waistline is, is getting washed out, I know I'm wearing the waist trainer too much, yes. you know? So again, I don't want to lose my abs, but I, I you know, I just you gotta be aware of it. You, you know? know, you can afford 10% atrophy. And if you get to that yeah. point, then, you know, you got to pull back. That's right. That's yep. right. So yep. again, keeping yourself accountable, just like we talked about with the scale, these are all little tools that will keep you progressing versus regressing. Yes. And you can use these during your holidays. Yes, you can. <laughs> there. I tied it all in. You did. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> so I think, do we have time for like a couple of questions? I still have questions from last week that I pulled up. Sure. Um, let me see. Um, so let's do these two. Okay. So tips for self-limiting beliefs and feeling confident. Do you have any tips as far as feeling confident? Yeah. Uh, that's, that's definitely one of my biggest struggle struggles is confidence and imposter syndrome. So I know everyone's going to be like, Oh my gosh, she's recommended this book a hundred times. Read the champion's mindset. It's such a good <laughs> book. Um, but we, we, we have talked about this quite a bit. Number one for me is always just being real with myself before I enter any show. Did I do everything possible? Um, if I did do everything possible, I noticed that my confidence has skyrocketed. Yeah. If I know that I have done everything that Jamie has asked me to do, I followed my diet every minute of cardio, every training, whatever. I, ha I can only go into that show confident because I did what I was asked. Mm -hmm. If I left anything on the table, if I pulled back at all, I have to be realistic with myself about that as well. Um, before my heel touches the stage, I always tap into my Capri. So Capri is my alter ego, my stage name. Uh, that's Drew came up with that name. So I tell myself right before my heel hits the stage, you are the badass bitch up here and go mm -hmm. show the judges what you're made of. Um, sometimes that translates and sometimes it doesn't. I will say this, the two times that I have won my pro shows, or three times I have won my sh pro shows, all three times the feedback has, has been, you came out there and you owned it and you were captivating. Hmm. The other times feedback was, you kind of looked timid up there. You kind of looked like you weren't sure of yourself, kind of looked like you were giving it away. So that really does translate just knowing that confidence and believing in yourself, whatever you have mm -hmm. to tell yourself before show. Yep. Um, 
I have the same thing. Like I kind of uh, tap into an alter ego kind of thing too. Um, I do a breathing exercise every time before I step on stage. It's like when I'm leaning backstage to, to wait in line. And it's just a simple, um, I learned this when I was in fifth grade from my gym teacher. <laughs> so, That's great. <laughs> breathe in to a count of three and breathe out to a count of three. And then you just keep slowing that count of three down. Um, and so as you slow your breath down, then your heart rate automatically just slows down. It's just an automatic response. So I do that every time that I'm backstage, regardless, because even if I'm not nervous internally, I know that my body's got nerves going on. Like I wasn't nervous at all at Hawaii or Japan. I don't know why, but I had no nerves, but I still did, did this breathing exercise while I was back there. Cause I was like, I just want to, you know, calm myself, that kind of thing. Um, and then I also think about when I'm standing back there, I'm like, this could very well be the last time I ever get on stage. You just don't know, you know, mm -hmm. the following the following day, you could get into a car wreck or something. Who knows? This could be my last time stepping on the stage. Wow, I want to make sure that it's worth it. Wow. You know, that's I, really cool. Yeah. I want to make sure that no matter what I put my best out there. Um, you know, I talked a little bit about with Japan, how cool the setup was with the stage and all that kind of stuff. But we didn't have an opportunity to, to test that till we actually stepped out on stage and just went and went for it. So, you know, backstage, a lot of the girls are like, what are we doing? Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to breathe. So I'm going to watch what they do up there. Watch that first girl go out. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. You know, you Thank know what you. that feels Thank like. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and I'm going to just go with it. And whatever happens, happens. You know what I mean? Um, I'm just going to, you know, I, and part of me is like, they put a lot of effort into this whole stage show too. Like they had the, you know, they had our pictures up on the screens and all kinds of, like they put a lot of effort into this. I'm going to put a lot of effort into this, you know? And I was like, I owe it to them to put on a show because they put this show together for me, you know? So that's another thing that I do in order to get my confidence in the right spot. Cause I'm like, I, again, that keeping myself accountable, I'm accountable to these promoters to put on a show. You know, I think probably a lot of performers think that too. It's like, I, I have to put on a good show for my, my people. You know what I mean? So that's part of it too. Like, so even if you aren't a hundred percent confident in yourself, you need to act like it for the, for the people that you're there for. Fake you know? it till you make it. That's right. That's yeah. right. And, um, you know, like when I went out on stage, I didn't even really know what I was going to do at that show because it was such a different setup as far as the staging was concerned. So I'm like, well, whatever my body decides to do, I'm just going to go with it. Just it is what it is. And it turned out great. You know what I mean? And I, I planned it in my head a little bit backstage. You know what I mean? But but sometimes you get thrown that stuff and you just got to freaking own it. Act like you meant to do it that way. Act like you've always planned to do it that way. And nobody in the audience will know any different. Like I try to tell my opposing clients this too. Like no matter what you do on stage, nobody in that audience knows what you plan to do versus what you actually did. You know, so act like you meant to, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what a pro would do. That's right. right. That's a right. Exactly. Can pivot and have option A, B, C and D and recover well. And that's right. absolutely. And the more that's you right. practice, yep. the more you're going to feel confident in the routine. But also mm -hmm. there are some things that come up, like Sean's saying, and it's your expectation wasn't wasn't the reality. So you that's have right. to pivot fast. That's right. And the more you practice, you're going to be able to find those pivot points of where you need to very easily. Yep. And again, not waiting to work on your weaknesses either. You know, like we talked about with the posing and, you know, I'm changing my transitions and stuff like that. When you find things that you can fix, go fix them, you yeah. know, and then you'll feel a lot more confident when you go out there the next time. Yes. Like, oh, I know that this was a problem this last time, so I'm going to fix it for next time. Yeah. Do it now so that you're ready. You yeah. know, those, again, what you, going back to what you just said, being prepared for it, you know, there's, there's a thousand different things that could hit you when you walk on that stage, but as long as you are prepared for anything, you're going to be able to get through it and you're going to feel confident doing it, you know? Yeah, um, and one of the things that, again, going back to Japan is a lot of the stuff that they talked about was in Japanese. So it's like, I don't know what they're saying. Yeah. You know, you, you just have to go with it. You just have to yeah. go with it. You know, thankfully the head judge was in English. You know, Steve Weinberger was the head judge. So thankfully everything he said was in English, but the announcer was not. So it's right. like, you just kind of have to stand there and wait till they tell you go, where to go. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what I mean? That's something you can't prepare for. So you just have to, you have to be like, okay, I'm, I know I can hit and hold my pose. And I'm just going to stand here and they tell until I know what else. Until you get a point to move. <laughs> yes. Until they tell you to go. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you just, you just have to be prepared for those things. And I think again, going back to like practicing your posing and stuff, but going to group classes, going to clinics, going to events, things like that. All of those things can put you into situations where if you were practicing by yourself, you wouldn't have been put into that situation. So now you know how to fix it if it becomes a thing, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know for myself, one of the things that I always tell people is like, um, when I go on stage for pro stage, they put you in order of your last name and H is right towards the center. So I always tend to be up towards the top of the, of the um, diagonal in the middle. So I tend to be in all the pictures and videos, which was the case, <laughs> which was the case for Japan. You're like, if you look at the comparison shots, I'm right there at the right very there. top of the diagonal. Yep. Yep. It's like, I, I'm, I'm right. I'm, I'm in everybody's view. So it's like, I know that that's a thing. So I better have my poses conditioned. Yes. But be, better be able to hold it. Yeah. Yep. And that knowing that I have that and that I'm able to do that again, brings confidence. Yeah. Again, brings confidence. Yeah, so. you're you're prepared whether you're on stage for five minutes or fifteen minutes, but yeah. you're prepared for the fifteen. That's right. Which yeah. was at least how long we were on stage in Japan. It was a long. Most show. pro shows are. <laughs> Most pro shows are. Yeah, especially if the lineup is competitive and they're they're really taking their time. And I notice that a lot of judging panels are taking their time. They want to make are. sure that Olympia qualification is correct, and I appreciate yep. that. So yes, we we have to be prepared to be on that stage for a very long time. <laughs> yep. And not even that. They they judge all the way down to the last girl that's on stage. Oh, they, they do. Judge they all do. the way down. Like a lot of people Everybody are, gets time. Yeah, they're wondering about that because, you know, once you get to that 16th spot, nobody gets scored anymore. You're still being judged. 100% yeah, they want to be able to give you feedback. Yes. Especially you if you're under 16. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. They want to make sure that they're able to give you that feedback. That's uh, the pros right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like they, it's the the respect that the judges have for us as athletes is no matter what that placing is, they're coming back to you backstage and telling you what was wrong, fix it. But in order to see that, they got to get a good look at you on stage. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, and they do do a good job of giving feedback too, which we can probably close out on this too, because um, uh, Becky Clausen put this up in her stories the other day about, you know, how behind she gets on, on feedback. Um, yeah. So stay for your feedback. Stay. Just stay and get your feedback, guys. Um, these judges don't make a lot of money, right? They, they have make, regular jobs. They don't make jobs, any money. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say that, but it's true. Yeah. <laughs> they have regular jobs throughout the week. So it's very difficult for them to get through a show that just had 500 competitors and give all that feedback out um, through your pictures and things like that. And you got to understand, too, what happens a lot of times. Say you did your show last week. Your photos don't come out for about a week in NPC. So by that time, that judge is already off to the next show, right? They're already going on to the next group of people. So stay and get your feedback. I know it's a pain in the butt and you have to stay to the end of the uh, end of the show, but just do that because then you've got your feedback and then you can hit the ground running the next day and you're good to go. Like, I'm so glad that I stayed for my feedback at both shows, Hawaii and Japan, because the feedback was different, you know? And again, going back to, we talked about this last, last week, but because my physique had changed between the two shows, my feedback was different. So let's say, for example, that I was going on to another show after Japan and I just went based on what my feedback was from Hawaii, it would have been completely different and I would have been shooting for the wrong thing going into the next show. So stay and get your feedback, stay and get your feedback, especially if you're going on to another show, like there's a lot of people right now that are going to nationals. They just did a show a week ago, two weeks ago, whatever. You're not going to get feedback back in time to apply it for nationals unless you stay at your show and get it. And the judges appreciate that most of the time too, because they don't have to then follow up with you through email. The only time that they don't give out feedback at shows typically is because if they, they have to leave. You know, if they have to leave, they got like sometimes they got to catch a flight out or whatever. Most of the time, they would much rather per stay there and give feedback, right? Yes. Yep. I mean, I'll tell you, when I was in Japan, it was cracking me up. Like as soon as as soon as the show was over, I literally went right to Tyler. I was like, boom! I was like, that was the second one in line, <laughs> and everybody else started flooding afterwards, and they're like surrounding the table, and Tyler's like, the line's over there. I'm like, yes. 
<laughs> yeah. After the show, I, I bring my snack and I sit right behind the judges table because as soon as the show's over, yep. I'm up for my feedback. Yep. And I get it, guys. You're hungry. It was a long day. These shows, that that's something that I'm having a problem with. They're getting longer and longer and, in my yeah. opinion, a little bit inefficient. Um, yeah. So I get it. It's it's long. It's frustrating. You want to get the hell out of there. You have family, friends. But in my opinion, the job is not done until you get your feedback at the end of the night. And if you are serious about the sport, that that is the end of the job. That's right. that's how you're going to know. I think a lot of people too feel like they're bothering the judges by staying yeah. backstage and asking for that feedback. To your point, I've heard that too from all judges that I speak to. They rather see the athlete in person after the show. The judges rather stay there for two or three hours or however long it takes. And then they know when they leave that ballroom, it's, it's done. done. It's yep. done. They've done everything they could. They they poured their heart out on that day. And then they're going back to their normal job on Monday. Yes. Um, so yes, yeah, stay for feedback. Second to that thing is too, I've received feedback on myself and other athletes many times where they said, I need them more fuller. I need, mm -hmm. I need a little bit more conditioning or make this posing adjustment. And I'll go, hmm. And I'll tell my client, can you hear your front pose for me? And I'll say, Tyler, where do you want more shoulder here? And he'll mm -hmm. be like, oh, maybe it's not that I want more density. Maybe I need it or a little bit leaner. Yeah. And the feedback changes like that from him yeah. seeing you in person a little bit closer. So now I know as the coach what specifically he's asking for. This is the thing to remember. Judges are not coaches. So they're yeah. going to give feedback based on what they think they see, but they don't necessarily know how to get there. Is right. it that the client needs more muscle or do they just need a little bit more fullness it's, yes. it's, it's hard for that, right? So if I am not there in person, which is very uncommon with my athletes, I literally have them record the record conversation. It. They ask yep. the judge, can I record this for my coach? Because I yep. want to hear their verbiage. I want to see right. how they're seeing things. That's really important and not something that you can get typed in an email. Right. Um, right. Unless the judge, which I've had before, but this was before NPC became as busy as it is. Just like you're saying, they go up on NPC News Online, a good judge that gives feedback, one of them being Becky, which is why she has 500 emails in her inbox. Right. She will put the winner of your class next to you. And then yep. she'll circle everything that's wrong or what they want different. Yep. That takes a lot of time. It does. So I agree. And it, it, feedback stay, bring a snack, yeah. tell your family, you will not see me till nine 30 at night, 10 o'clock at night. Sorry, mm -hmm. whatever that is, finish the job, especially if yeah. you want to be better. If you're going to a national show. Yeah. This is a no brainer in my opinion. Yes. Well, I understand, like you said, understanding your feedback too. the whole recording, the feedback is important because <clears throat> again, you and I kind of understand the verbiage of a judge, whereas other competitors don't. They don't get when, like, when a judge tells you to be fuller or a judge tells you to be more conditioned or whatever it might be. You know, like, again, when I was talking to Tyler at uh, in Japan, he's like, Yeah, you could have been a little bit tighter. I knew that didn't mean be leaner. That meant I needed more muscle, you know? Whereas somebody else who doesn't understand the verbiage might say, Well, I just needed to be leaner. No. Now you're coming in stringy and then Correct. you're, then your feedback's going to be, I need you to a little bit more fuller and need you, right. you know, whatever. And you're like, I did yeah. what I thought you said. So that's why you, and that's where you get the problems with people like, well, he didn't know what he was talking about. Blah, 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 blah. Judges don't know what they're, what they're looking at. No, they do. It's just, you need to understand the actual language that they're speaking. Yeah. It is a different language. You know, it is a different language. That's why I try to do all my, you know, my recap, recaps and stuff like that and try to show it and explain it because it literally is a different language and you need to understand what they're saying and different words can mean different things on different people. Yeah. So, you know, going back to, you know, I, I, I like the recording aspect of it too, because then I yeah. can hear it and be like, yeah, they're absolutely right. Or, you know, what they mean by this is because a lot of times I'll get, you know, my clients will, opposing clients will say something, well, they said I needed this, this, this. I said, no, that's not what they said. It's the game of telephone. <laughs> yeah. It's the game of telephone. Yep. 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 They, I was like, they didn't say that actually. What they're saying is this, you know? Um, so those are, those are the things that can help again, to get you moving on the, on the right foot from the get-go from the absolutely. Get -go. So, absolutely. So anyway, that was a long, that was a long one. <laughs> <laughs> lots of information. Lots of I know, right? I know. I, I think I just haven't talked to people in a while because I, like, you know, we start, I've been home for the last week or whatever. And I'm like, oh, I'm not like with people 24 seven. Like I was <laughs> in Japan and Hawaii. Like I need to talk to people. <laughs> <laughs> you, you need, you need the girl time. I know. Right. For real. <laughs>
<sighs> I can breathe. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Okay, so let's wrap it up. So that was a lot of information. Um, some of it was on holiday, handling the holidays. <laughs> there was a lot of other things in there too. Uh, you know, went around them. But it was, I think it was all good information. I think. Absolutely. So, um, Absolutely. We'll give give us your feedback. feedback. <laughs> give right? Us, give us a comment as, below. Exactly. As always. And ask questions. If, they, if you need clarification on some of the stuff that we talked about, things like that too. Um, hopefully it'll help you manage your holiday season a little bit better. We're all going to off seasons right now. If you're not, um, you're already in off season because there are no shows until, till March. So, you know, after nationals this weekend. Um, so with that, as always like comment, subscribe, all the fun stuff. Um, and we'll be back again, hopefully next week. Cause you're going to be moving and things like that. So we'll figure out something for next week. Maybe we'll do a live or something. Uh, but yeah. We'll I think a live might week. be better. Yes. Yeah, so I am yeah. leaving next Wednesday and then Monday, Tuesday is going to be the movers coming and things like that. So hopefully we can get on a little live maybe when I'm, in my two 16 hour day drives. I'm sure that will help keep me, keep me a little bit alive. There you go. Keep, keep you uh, focused on your, on keep your journey. Keep me focused and awake. That's it. I love it. I love it. it. All right. Well, enjoy all of that. Um, we'll be back here again next week. And till then, we out. Bye guys. Follow your reverse <laughs> diet.